Well, hey everybody, it's Hudson, and welcome to this week's Approaching the Scene. This week I'm, I'm literally swimming in new tech to talk about, uh, and I'm gonna have to pick just a few things. I'm literally working with a brand new computer, a PC for the first time in a decade. Uh, I've got a brand new camera bag and an ambassadorship with F-Stop to talk about another video. Uh, but today I wanna talk briefly about the new Kirk Enterprise Solutions top for the Manfrotto 500H fluid head that, that I love so much and that so many of you I know have adopted and are using as well. I've gotten a lot of questions about it. Everybody's kind of itching to know what is that thing on top of your tripod. And it's, it's in its second version, I kind of helped a little bit with setting the second version up to be just optimized for those of us that love to do panoramas and to save a little bit of money and a little bit of weight in our bag. I also wanna talk about the new Tech Art, this little, tiny, ultra thin, like maybe a millimeter thick adapter that goes from the Nikon Z cameras to Sony's E-Glass. Uh, I got one really because I, I absolutely love my 10 millimeter rectilinear full frame Voigtlander manual focus lens. I just wanted to be able to use it on the Z cameras, but it's actually blown my mind with its autofocus ability uh, and just how high tech this tiny little guy is. It doesn't come with a lot of documentation, so I've had to figure out how to use it and I'll share a little bit of that info in case anyone's interested. I also wanna talk about some further testing that I've done of Nikon's firmware 2 upgrade to the autofocus and just how good the autofocus has gotten at tracking fast motion in burst mode. It really has become astounding and it's astounding how well it works with Sony lenses autofocusing through this tiny little adapter. So a lot to talk about today. I'll show you some examples of what I'm talking about. I wanna start out talking about the fluid head and the new top. I've just, I've had so many questions from people about it who've seen me in videos using it and, and the, you know, you guys have bought fluid heads and you're like, what the heck is that? I kinda of wanna start for those people that aren't as familiar. You know, you can go back and look at some of my fluid head videos, um, but I'm gonna start out with kinda of how I used to set up fluid heads to work with Arca Swiss railed cameras and L brackets. And you know, the, the trajectory I've had was originally, you know, these, these Arca Swiss uh, plates on our cameras are super handy, but they don't necessarily made up with the video industry standard for fluid heads. And so I originally got these long handled clamps and mounted them so they can accept an L bracket and mount right on the Manfrotto plate, which has a long area to mount underneath. You can get it nice and snug. Uh, and then you can just mount your L bracket right to that and the whole plate moves back and forth to get your camera balanced so that it gets in perfect balance, almost gimbal-like on top of these heads. Um, the only problem is when you're using a long lens, you know? So I eventually said, well, you should just buy long Manfrotto plates, they make them in all different lengths and they're sort of an industry standard the same way that Arca plates are in the fluid head industry. Uh, buy one of these plates for each of your long lenses and just mount it to the foot. But that's kind of big, kind of bulky. Um, so tossing that aside, the first innovation that Jeff Kirk and Kirk Enterprise Solutions came up with was this really cool clamp that mounts on a block with all kinds of holes drilled in it and you can move it forward and aft. And the really kind of killer innovative part of it is that the block has this little square mounting surface on the top. It comes with the Allen wrench built in and you just loosen that and you can flip the clamp's orientation lickety split. So it goes from being set up for an L bracket to set up for your long lens with an Arca rail mounted on the foot like you would for your ball head or for your gimbal. So easy peasy, boom, there it goes. That whole thing just mounts to the rail and it's super interchangeable and cool. Well, I thought that was pretty great. I started using that. A lot of people started showing up in my workshops, haven't seen my videos using that. It's a really great system. Fast forward, about, I don't know, a month, five weeks ago, he told me he had a surprise, hit me up via text and sent me one of these new top plates. It's for the 500 AH specifically, and it really truly is a whole new top plate for the tripod. You take these four screws out of the old Manfrotto top plate, pull it and the quick release assembly for the sliding plate off, and on goes this top plate, which has a mount for that same kind of clamp built in. You don't need the little block. 
and you can rotate the clamp however you want. So you can set this thing up to be more like a ball head where it just accepts an L bracket and it's set to go. You can go vertical, you can set it up for your long lens with the rail, lickety split, easy peasy. To me, I looked at it and I, I, the original one is right here. It has one square mount point to put that, to set that uh, clamp into. We, you, know, you can rotate it because it's square and it locks in place with the Allen screw. And I looked at it and I thought, that's great, but it doesn't really solve the problem of getting your camera balanced out over the fluid head. One of the things I love about the fluid head is once you mount your camera on it and adjust the weight of your camera fore and aft with the sliding plate, there's no flop. You can get the thing balanced and be setting up your composition, let go of the camera, it doesn't fall forward, it doesn't fall off. It's not like a ball head where everything's flopping around. And so, you know, I started out looking at, well, mounting it up with Kirk's nodal rail. So the panoramic nodal slider that lets you get over the no parallax point to do advanced panoramas. I thought, well, that can work for sliding. It's got a clamp that rotates right on it. I'm always carrying it in my bag for panoramas anyway. Let's me slide forward and aft with the setup. I can pop it out, put a long lens in there. I don't even have to switch the rotation or the orientation. I'm already set to go that way. And then I realized that with my new mirrorless setup, the Kirk long nodal rail is a little bit too long, especially with the 14 to 30 or my 10 millimeter lens, it sticks out and it gets in the scene. Um, so <laughs> then the next thing I thought about was this original one that he sent me, this original top plate, the version one, was set up in a way that when it mounted up there, the clamp wasn't directly mounted over the axis of rotation. So the clamp would be moving a little bit as the head rotated. So I called up Jeff, talked to him, explained my concern, said, you know, if we could find a way to mount this thing where the clamp is directly over the center of rotation, well, then when doing complex panoramas, you'd lose the need for a lower panning clamp. You don't, you, you, this whole head would operate. Once you level it, boop, you can level it from down below. Then the whole clamp rotates. You set your point for no parallax right in the clamp and the head becomes your lower panning clamp. You save that weight in your bag. And we also need, because of the mirrorless revolution, a shorter panning clamp. So what Jeff did was set it up so that it still rotates, still spins. You can actually set the clamp up in different places in this new plop top plate. This is version two. It's up on the website. It's ready to buy. And the way it's mounted, the way I have it mounted right now, it's directly mounted over the axis of rotation so that if I put my finger on that screw in the center and between those two center marks of the clamp, the head rotates perfectly underneath. My finger is not moving at all. You can drop a plumb bob over it. And they made a shorter nodal slider. So I'm gonna put links to both those in the description to this video. This thing is set up perfect for our new, smaller mirrorless systems where it doesn't get in the frame with an ultra wide angle. So perfect combination. And by switching this top plate, it actually makes your 500 AH head even slightly lighter. And if you're a person who likes to do complex panos and you've got a nodal slider in your bag anyway, all of a sudden it just integrates into your tripod. It's part of your system for getting everything balanced. And balancing your camera is as easy as, you know, loosening this, this tilt. Right now I'm a little too far back. I just slide forward with the nodal slider a little bit. I'm in balance. I can, I can set up however I want. I stay perfectly level and I'm in balance. So, Super, super, super cool stuff. Bravo to Jeff Kirk and the gang at Kirk Enterprise Solutions. And it's been fun to be a part of the process of kind of perfecting this thing. I'm absolutely loving using it. So I'll put links to all that stuff. Uh, it's easy to find on their website if you just go to Kirk Enterprise Solutions. Oh, you know, one other thing that's really, really cool, they even set up sort of a naked system. For those of you who'd already bought one of these clamps with the blocks to mount to a Manfrotto plate, you don't have to buy the whole assembly. If you've already got one of these, they have a cheaper version that just comes with the top plate. Oh, and a really nice looking replacement uh, panning screw that just dresses your, your head up a little bit over the stock plastic Manfrotto one. It's a nice metal Kirk knob that goes in there to, to, to 
stop your uh, panning. So there you go. That's the, uh, the fluid head system, the new ultra cool fluid head system. Now I want to talk for just a second about Nikon's updated autofocus software uh, in the firmware version 2.0. I've been using it. It's really truly been blowing my mind. Um, it, it, you know, I'm still going to keep my D500 DSLR just because I get 200 frames at 10 frames a second. The buffer is huge on that 20 megapixel camera. With the Z6, the 24 megapixel camera, I get about 27 frames, and that's a lot different than 200. You know, I have to be a little more judicious with how hot I am on the trigger at 11 frames a second. You can run out in a couple of seconds. So shooting someone kiteboarding or the kids running around, it's easy to just fire off a burst and find yourself having to wait 10 seconds for the buffer to clear. It clears really fast with those fast riding XQD cards, but it's still a little bit smaller buffer, and I'm hoping that the next iteration of cameras, they, they boost that buffer like they did in the D850 and the D500. But the good news is it's not missing shots in the burst. It's tracking. I'm using dynamic area autofocus mode, selecting that first point, holding the AF on button, and firing bursts, and it's really tracking well. So I'll show you some images here in Lightroom that kind of highlight what I'm talking about. Um, this is, these are some shots from Three Mile out in the Columbia River Gorge, way out east, um, near Boardman, Oregon. This is, uh, this is this crazy guy that I met out there who was just boosting huge. He's from, uh, he's from Idaho. And you can see, I mean, <laughs> this is a lot like photographing birds in flight. The first image I picked him up. I was photographing someone else and pop, there he is with another kite behind him. Got that autofocus point on him. He's moving around in the frame. I'm just keeping the button held down. The camera's keeping him razor sharp at f4.5. Uh, this is with my Nikon 70 to 200 2.8 adapted through the FTZ adapter. All these images. This is my good friend Dusty coming in on bare, you know, no straps on his surfboard, trying to do a cool move, kind of messing it up. And you know, maybe it's a little bit off in that, in the couple frames there, but that would not be uncommon with my DSLRs. And, boosh, you know, pretty darn nice job of tracking fast moving. Well, I'm at f2.8 here, shallow depth of field, keeping him nicely focused through this whole thing. You know, a couple of frames missed again, but as everything's changing. Here's another frame, you know, or th this really shows f2.8 again, shallow depth of field. I'm not doing a great job of holding him in focus or in the same place in the frame, and the camera's doing a good job passing it between autofocus points. This is all with the Z6. Um, really nice stuff. So then, you know, I got this tech art adapter to use my old Voigtlander. 10 millimeter Sony f5.6 lens. I adore this little ultra wide, lightweight rectilinear lens. It's the widest angle rectilinear full frame lens made to date. And I really love wide angles. So, you know, kind of getting out of the Sony system into the Nikon Z system, this is the one little piece of kit that I couldn't quite bring myself to put up on the auction block. And I was waiting for an adapter. Then TechArt announced that they have this Sony E to Nikon Z ultra thin adapter. One of the nice things about the Nikon Z mount is it is the shortest flange distance of any of the mirrorless cameras. So theoretically, you know, if you can build a thin enough adapter as TechArt's done here, you can adapt just about any other lens to it without having much trouble. The TechArt adapter is pretty amazing. It's so thin and yet it has a chip and passes all the autofocus and metering information and everything through it. There's a little red dot on it that you have to line up with its lens cap kind of complicated when you're first learning to use it. It has this lens cap that's thicker and has contacts and built-in electronics and a USB port right on it that you can use to upgrade the firmware. Pretty darn brilliant because the adapter is too thin to put any kind of a port for updating firmware. There's a little metal knob on it, tiny, tiny knob, and you just pull it away from the adapter on the lens cap, and then you can rotate and take the cap off. That took me a while to figure out when it was when I just had it. It's actually a little slider. Again, you slide it down and away from the adapter, sort of towards the towards you and the camera right now, and then rotate it to take the adapter off. And you actually have to take the cap off to push this little, there's a little stem that sticks out. 
and you take a Sony lens like this 70 to 200 f4, and there's a white dot on the outside of this, and there's a white dot on the Sony lenses. You just set it on there and rotate. Now to get that lens off, you have to, there's that little knob that sticks out and you just barely press on it. Don't press it very hard. It feels like it could break. But if you just press it a little bit, it disengages and then you can rotate to get off. So once you put it on there, oops, I gotta find the white dot again. White dot to white dot. There we go, it's on. Then you take your Nikon, where'd I set my Nikon? Boom. And literally, it's got a little tiny red dot on the inside where it mounts that lines up with the white dot on the Nikon Z camera. Whoop, there it is. There's just a tiny little sliver of silver there. The amazing thing is it works great with my Voigtlander. I just leave it in aperture priority mode and I leave the camera set wide open and use the aperture dial on my Voigtlander lens and it meters just fine. The killer thing and surprising thing to me, these are all shot with the Sony 70-200 f4. Wide open at f4, just the other day at my favorite kiteboarding spot here near Portland at Savvy Island. This is my good buddy John Wilbur. We're all kind of learning to hydrofoil. It's a, a new thing that's a lot like hoverboarding where there's a hydrofoil under the water. Just watch how well the Z6 is tracking. There's my wife Stacy on her surfboard. She's close up, we're at F, let's look at information here. F4, wide open with that lens, tracking her. This guy is an amazing foiler. He's throwing a move, he didn't have quite enough air to pull off what he wanted, but look at how well it's tracking. I don't know how he came back up out of the water. And then to kind of do a final test, probably more important for most people than the ability to track kite borders in the water is the ability to track your running kids or your running grandkids. So here's, Stacy, Pike, and Pepper on the beach. Pepper's been really insistent on wearing these just ridiculous winter uh, rated for 20 degrees below zero snow boots that we use when we're cross country skiing. Here she is in 80 degree weather at the Columbia River where we kiteboard running around in the sand in them. You know, some arguments you just pick not to make. But watch how well this camera's tracking. I've got it on Pike. He's coming at me. I catch focus there as he's running towards me the whole burst, then switch to pepper in that same bit. I don't lose focus on her until she gets too close for the camera to focus. Same thing with Pike here. Just a really, really good job in burst mode, particularly when you consider that we're not talking about a native lens on the camera. It just is really awesome how well this, the, the Nikon firmware version two is tracking autofocus and burst mode. It is night and day better than it was before. I think it's honestly as good as the D850 and the D500. I just want a little more buffer. Um, that's the one thing that I feel I'm missing. It's fast as can be. Pa, 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 pa. It's a little stuttery feeling. It's a little different feeling, honestly. It just takes a little time getting used to. Uh, not that bad. Definitely good and usable. That viewfinder is so good. It's just that, you know, the Z7, you hit the buffer really fast. It's probably about, I don't know, 17, 15 photos. Uh, with the Z6, you hit it, you hit it, at, it, you got a little bit more leeway. It's about 26, 27 photos, but then when you hit it, you know you've hit it. And it, you know, you, you have to wait a few seconds and then you can get a few more frames. And then it's about 10, 15 seconds to write the whole 27 images and you get a new burst. Um, so you have to be judicious. I find myself, picking my shots, but the tracking is there and it's holding throughout the scene. As long as I hold that AF button down and I've acquired my subject and I don't let it leave the frame, it does a great job of tracking it. So that's really, really good. All right, so thanks everyone. I really appreciate everybody um, subscribing, liking, sharing the channel. It's been so much fun doing these weekly videos. Uh, I'm gonna put a link to buy all the stuff that I've been talking about, the FTZ, or no, the, 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 the new Sony E to Nikon adapter, uh, and also the Kirk stuff. I'm gonna put direct links to those guys. Uh, I don't think they're, they're at B&H and Amazon, and I prefer you just go to Kirk and give them your business direct. They're a great bunch of people. Uh, again, if you're into buying any gear, hit my links. I got links to all my gear in the video description. Uh, and if you're thinking about buying something or you want advice, hit me up anytime and I'll send you links to Amazon and B&H. That stuff helps me out. All right. Thanks, everybody, and we'll see you next week.